Hey everyone, this is Ian with Racing Cards. Um, really excited to do another one of these community chats. Uh, in this case, and today, you know, I'm excited to be able to spend some time with Rex Lee of Saucy World, you know, and talk Formula What's One cards. On? So, uh, yeah, for sure. Why don't you give us a little bit of your your background and uh, you know, tell us what got you into Formula One cards? Sure. Um, so, probably early 2000s, I actually started off um, building drift cars um, for a living. Um, and that's kind of where, um, I was always into motorsports growing up as a kid. My dad, you know, got me into it. I rode dirt bikes my whole life, all that stuff like that. Um, and I got into drifting a whole lot, um, kind of at the younger age, but, um, 08 to 09, um, you know, we had that huge collapse of the stock market, the housing market, everything. Yeah. People weren't going to the tracks anymore. People definitely weren't buying race cars. People definitely weren't spending $4,000 on tires to blow up on the weekend. Um, and at that point, I had about three or four race cars uh, sitting in my driveway and about two like show cars in the garage. Uh, and I sat on them for a couple of weeks and just watched the values plummet on them. And I finally mm -hmm. sold them at cost. And I, from there on, I was like, well, that's, you know, pretty much not an avenue anymore that I could pursue. So uh, I, I still keep like a car for myself to kind of build and mess around on. But um Motorsport wise, I was into drifting, rally racing, and um, I never got into the NASCAR stuff, really. So once I was introduced to Formula One by a buddy of mine, it was kind of uh, like, whoa, you know, th yeah. this is like, this is the, the bee's knees, you know, yeah. the, these guys, there's only 10 of them, you know, it's so much more competitive, faster speeds, the corners, just everything to do with everything from, you know, the team principles, the just pit crew guys all the way down to the rules of the FIA stuff it was just a whole nother ball game I had to learn. So um, I kind of just got swamped into it because a buddy of my mind showed me a race and it just blew me away. Um, so once these cards came out, I mean, it was just a natural step. I, I picked up two boxes and one of the boxes I hit a Hamilton gold 70th out of. And oh, nice. uh, yeah, so, and that just, I, I'm an avid gambler. And once yeah. that happened, it just like fueled the fire, man. It just, uh, it, you know, it ignited the flame that now I uh, just have hundreds to thousands at a time of these F1 cards. So, the, the uh, so on your first box, pulling that gold 70th, my first box I ever opened, I pulled a, a true gold, you know, out of 50 Hamilton. Okay. And, uh, oh, and I was like, man, this is easy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, but it's like, I haven't. I have ripped since then dozens and dozens and dozens of boxes. Like I've opened multiple cases and I haven't hit another mm -hmm. one of those cards. And yeah. So it was like beginner's luck for me. Hopefully you've hit yeah. much bigger since that first box. Um, believe it or not, that was, and I, that box that we had, I actually split with my buddy who was in the formula one. Cause he was like, yo, let's split a box. You know, I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I had um, opened up uh, another box previously. I'd like to got two boxes at once. And the one I opened up for myself, I hit like uh a Luca Giotto, like auto or something like that, you know, like nothing. And so, of course, at the Hamilton with him, I was like, all right, well, I guess we got to split it. So, uh, you know, still, it was great hitting that. Um, actually, yeah. I think I have that video on YouTube of me hitting that one. Um, and then after that, I think I opened up 10 to 11 more boxes and all F2 autos. I yeah. had a couple boxes I hit plates on, um, but they were all F2 autos after that. So, any of my big cards that I've actually acquired have been either through a trade, um, just buying outright or sitting on eBay, like a degenerate, you know, watching yeah. every single card go by. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm that same way. I, I'm curious, like, cause people ask me all the time, like, where can you find these cards? So other than eBay, you know, where are you that, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter or maybe somewhere else, like, where are you finding deals? Yes. So, um, as you know, the F1 community on Instagram is huge. Um, there's, I would, unlike any of the other sports, baseball, basketball, all, you know, the big soccer stuff, the F1 community seems like the most, um, I don't know how to explain it, like wholesome, if that's yeah. the word to use. Um, you, I could really trust the people I feel like on there a lot more. Not everyone's not looking to rip someone off. Yeah. So I've done a lot of successful deals through the Instagram community and after that, I would say eBay has been a really big success of mine. 
there's a lot of people that are afraid to buy the uh, Chinese, you know, yeah. stuff, the Taiwan stuff. Um, but as long as you're sure you're buying an authentic product, you could save yourself 20 to 30% on some of those cards because people aren't wanting to take the risk of buying from Singapore, which for me, I don't understand. But for other people, you know, I get it. It's a, it's a calculated yeah. risk. So I would say, honestly, eBay is probably the biggest bet. Um, but Instagram, man, is really... I feel like any of these guys you go to, they'll always at least cut you a fair deal. And if you say, Hey, you know, here's a recent comp, you know, can you match this comp? They're always willing to at least match a comp. So. Yeah, you're right. It, it is a tight, tight community. And I think more than that, it's like, it's a trustworthy community. Um, and everyone's trying yeah. to like figure this thing out, you know, as we go, cause it's, you know, this yep. last 12 months was when these, you know, cards started to like explode on the scene. And like the other day yeah. I shipped out a, purple Perez, you know, to, uh, to somebody, um, in, in Mexico, you know, who's just a huge Checo mm -hmm. fan, you know, I threw in there track tag world on wheels and a couple other cards like for him. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, people have done that, you know, for me as well. Yep. And so there's a lot of just, you know, helping out the community. Hey, you mentioned printing yeah. plates. Like what do you, what are your thoughts on printing plates versus like the standard um, paper? I think they're super, super undervalued. Um, I recently on my IG, um, I acquired a Max, um, I believe it was a yellow plate PSA 10 auto. It was just authentic. They didn't grade the card. Um, the previous yeah. person who had it didn't get it graded. They just uh, you know, got the grade on the auto. And I scooped it up and I was livid with how much I got. I was like, this is great, man. This, this card's awesome. And I'm thinking in my head, like, dude, this thing's easily compared to what some of the reds and, and yeah. oranges are doing. This is a $25,000 card, but it really didn't bring that. And um, people, it's really weird. Some people don't like plates. Other people love plates. Yeah. And I think it's something that as these cards dry up, as the boxes dry up, the pull rates are really going to be sought after. Um that pull, I believe, is one in 3,200, 300 something. Crazy. Of, yeah. yeah, of the autograph variation versus like, you know, just hitting the, the aqua sapphire or, you know, even the purple uh, out of the chrome. Um, that's like the price is kind of, of where the auto is sold for. And yeah. in my head, I'm thinking it's crazy, but I made a little bit of profit. The guy who got the card I know was going to probably PC it and keep it for a long time. Yeah. until the plates um you know start you know bringing the value they should but i think it's one of the most underrated products right now um oh, high, yeah. one of the highest hit rates behind the super fractors there's only four of them out there um the black plate definitely shows the best out of the plates um the yellow the magenta and the cyan um some of them you like can't read the names on them and whatnot but the black plate always seems to bring the most money um i yeah. think i might even have yeah, what, like what do you this have? This one I have they, here is a uh, a signs auto that I've been kind of holding back. Yeah. yeah, and that's that awesome. um, what's this? Uh, yeah, this is one of the magenta plates. Um, magenta. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Um, and I've just just been holding this back. I really wanted to do a custom label because I use HGA for doing a lot of custom labels. Oh yeah, those and, are And cool. um, yeah, and I really like the custom labels, but the PSA resale is just so much more. Than the HGA, that's why I've kind of hold off on doing that. Um, I was probably going to end up PSA in that card eventually, but uh, for right now, I've just been holding on to it, and just uh, that's one I really don't want to sell because that's another one of my undervalued drivers. I've been kind of hoarding I think a little science bit. Science is, is big undervalued, right? Like, yeah, so I've for done sure. a, a few of these videos now, and you know, everyone's talked about Ferrari being the undervalued. You know whether it's Leclerc yeah. or whether it's signs but the close of the year for signs was rock solid man and if yeah and, and if that car like lives up to you know you know them putting all the energy in last year and building for next year's regulations the guy could be getting more podiums yeah and i think i can't remember the record i think he had the the record this year for the most consecutive points in a race yeah. um yeah. i can't remember off the top of my head. i think he yeah, had something it, it, like that totally going consistent. on yeah and people were like, just, I mean, they, I know I love Charles. He's a great driver, um, super exciting driver as well. But Carlos, man, I think people really sleep on him. Um, and there's a couple others out there um, that I've been hoarding as well, too. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to get into yeah, you that. Don't, you don't have not. to say all your secrets, but like yeah. I'm, I'm currently a, a buyer, not a seller of signs. 
Um, mm -hmm. I just sold some Leclerc's that I shipped out today that I was like, ah, I should be holding some of those. But is, yeah. is there anybody else like not giving away your secrets, but anybody else that you think is like undervalued right now? Yeah, I would say the number one undervalued guy that you could pick up right now for cheap um, is Ocon. Oh, yeah. And my whole belief on that is I know there's going to probably be in the comments of this. People are going to be disagreeing <laughs> with me so much. Um, I'm a Lewis fan through and through. Yeah. So, the, you know, that final race was like devastating to me. Oh, and every time people totally. talk about Max winning a consecutive championship, I always go to, he shouldn't even won this one. The dude was <laughs> 20 seconds behind Lewis. And they're like, oh, well, what about this race? And I'm, just, and I'm like, look, I'm talking about the last race. He should have had it in the bag. Stuff happened. Max took it home. Max drove great all year, though, so it was deserved. But I truly believe that um, Russell this year will be kind of a backup for Lewis. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about this with a couple other buddies of mine, too. Um, I actually got to, I had an hour long conversation with a guy I did a deal with last night on this exact topic. Uh, and he was agreement as well. Um, I'm going to shout him out. Uh, s and Collectibles. Me and him were discussing this. Nice. And Russell is probably going to be the backup for Lewis for this next mm -hmm. year in pursuit of Lewis hitting that eighth and retiring. Um, and we were like, we're like, yeah, man, we're, dude, we're right on the same page of this. We're, that's, and that's what I think is going to happen. I think um, he's probably going to assist Lewis in getting that eighth this year. Lewis retires. And I think Toto moves Ocon to Mercedes to then oh, assist Russell on pursuing um, the championships yeah. from there on out. So I think Ocon will eventually move to Mercedes because he's a, yeah. a Toto driver. And I think once that happens, his values are going to, you know, triple overnight probably. Yeah, no, that, that, by the way, you're the first one that I've heard that take on. And it's a good take. I mean, it makes, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Like I've seen the, the Pierre Gasly, like maybe, you know, he would go in and step in for Hamilton if Hamilton doesn't come back. Yep. But like, he's a Red Bull driver, you know? And so it does yeah. make sense that like, yeah, to Toto plays both sides of the table. I, I don't understand yeah. how he's able to do that. He runs the team, but also he manages drivers. Yeah, so yeah, so we can sure. kind of pick and choose whoever's in the Toto yeah. stable of drivers that he manages, you know, figure out their path yep. from Mercedes. So that, that's an interesting and, take. Uh, out there. And another take too with my buddy I was talking with last night, um, I kind of agree with as well, is Mercedes and Red Bull can't have two championship drivers on the team at a time. Mm -hmm. It's it, it never works out throughout all of history. Um, um, and I really think that Ocon will never be a full championship driver. Mm. I think that his place will be solely assisting Russell. Because um, as we saw from Russell getting in Hamilton's car, and he should have won that race, yeah. the guy has tremendous talent to just step in someone else's car. Granted, it was the best car on the grid. You know, yeah, but absolutely. still, um, you know, him to be able to get in someone else's car and uh, perform like that, I really think this year Russell will podium a couple of times for sure. And I think that we will see him in the following year really come into full form after, you know, kind of Lewis teaches him everything that he knows. Um, yeah. But I mean, if Russell comes out the bag and wins one right off the back, it could be a real big mess for Mercedes as well. Yeah. So that's always an yeah. option too, you know? Yeah, I agree. It, it, it definitely is going to be interesting. And um, going back to like Russell and printing play, I, you know, you showed one of yours. I, I got a black, you know, Russell portrait printing Beautiful. plate. And, and to your point that you said before, like the, the black printing plates, like here's like a track tag of Gasly, like black. Okay. I had one of Verstappen okay. uh, in the past and I'm okay. so upset I sold the Verstappen black track tag of you yeah. know, printing plate. But like the printing plates just like look good. They're rare. And one of the yeah. other conversations that I had with uh, Buffy from Buff Breaks was he's done a lot of math on like the, the poles and the print runs. And to your point, yeah. it's super hard to pull a plate, but also one of the yep. things that's undervalued is people don't realize just how rare the 70ths are. Like you mentioned pulling a gold yeah. 70th. That's a hard pull, but it's super undervalued yep. right now on eBay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like those cards are some of the cards, if you can, if you have the money to scoop them up now, is the time to scoop it up. Um, I'm going again back to this conversation I just had last night. Um, me and this guy, we just kind of connect and we had like such similar mindsets. Yeah. Um, and he he said, you know, you got to remember, this is the first run of the F1 Tops Chrome. And he exactly said this, you know, you got to think about it. this is like the 50-51 of Tops Baseball. You know, it's yeah. this is the first 
hit. And I think all the cards are undervalued as they are right now going into the future. But for people to one be passing up on the plates and the 70th editions, um, I think is a huge miscalculation right now. But um, I do think maybe within the next six months, people are, as all the product dries up, they're going to start realizing it. I was one of the guys that as soon as I opened up my first pack, I looked at the odds on the back of the pack and try to commit that to memory almost, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I always base a lot of my buys off of the pack odds, um, all mathematical stuff. Yeah. Um, even if I'm overpaying for something now and that I know I'm going to hold, I know it's going to return in the future just because of the odds of that pull. They aren't out there. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There's there's some math that, you know, even though some of the cards don't have the numbers on the back, you know, on it, mm -hmm. you know, like the 70s, uh, you know, they're they're super rare. If you just read the pack odds, you know, on it, you can start to figure these things out. And and to your yeah. point, I think uh, the market's going to start to you know, understand the value once all the product dries up. And I think you got a couple, yep. like three things gonna, that are going to happen. One, the product's drying up. Uh, two, you know, we have the new season of Dry to Survive. They'll be coming out. They'll just get more popularity and mainstream. And then the new season's, you know, going to be here. You know, yep. and I think all those things, like I'm a pretty big hold right now or buy, you know, until the new season starts and we're a few races in. And yeah. then maybe I'll start selling a few more of these cards. But stuff kind of dipped down a little bit once the season ended. So it's a good buying yeah, time. For sure. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely some deals out there. If you have the money to spend and you could scoop up some of the bigger Lewis or Max cards, it's yeah. definitely the time to do it now. Um, as yeah. soon as that season hits, man, it's going to go crazy again, for sure. And they're still, they're still pretty expensive cards out there. Hey, I got two packs of Chrome here. Um, I want to cool. want to open a couple of these. We'll just talk about the cards, you know, that we pull out of it. You and I have yeah, read many of these packs, you know, and you, you start to like know these cards by number, right? <laughs> like, yeah, right. You know, because we, we rip them just so often. But all right, so I got a, I, I really don't like these cards. So this is the Aston Martin Red Bull Racing DHL Fast Lap Award. <laughs> you know, those. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And then here, here's a Oatmar Team Principal. I have this one in red. Oh, Actually, God. I just shipped this one in red. And uh, okay. it was a case hit that I got out of red, which was a painful case. <laughs> uh, Robert Schwartzman, he, he's been, um, people have been buying up a lot of his cards recently on yeah. eBay, just being announced as like a Ferrari, you know, test driver yep. and the Ferrari stable and could yeah. be some upside. If you've ever then, talked to um, Scott over at the castle, yeah, he is big on, on him. Um, and he? he's got a pretty good outlook on why too. And after I heard his kind of take on him, I was like, I think I might scoop a couple of these cards for myself yeah. as well. Or save uh, yeah, them. I think sell them. Like those could be those those like F2 cards you've gotten in the random, yep. you know, buys. You're like, all right, there's another driver can hold on. And then we got a uh, World on Wheels, Carlos Sainz. All right, this next pack, I think we're going to have a hit in it. So okay, I'm going to go. rip this one open. I'm trying not to show what we're going to get. All right. So we have uh, Art Grand Prix F2 card. That's not a hit. We have a F2 Trident. So clearly this is the the, the Trident pack, or not yeah. the F2 packs. We got a Future Stars, Luis, Delatraz. So my guess yep. is we're gonna have an F2. Is gonna be my yeah. guess. It might be an F2, all F2 pack, right? So we are, we're red. Okay, okay. So that's, that's not bad. We're red, we're, we're looking like a portrait here, but we are F2. Oh, a red out of five oh. F2 Future Stars, the Ruvula. Oh, I've only pulled out of all the boxes and all the cases. This is my third red card I've pulled. And okay. one was a Oatmar team principal. Now this one. And then I did get a, uh, a Lewis like award winner one, but uh, God. God, man, it's like I always go up yeah. to like my my daughter or my wife, and I go, "If only that was like Max or Hamilton, right? like this would be like a fifty thousand dollar card versus yeah. the you know fifty dollars that it's probably worth right now." <laughs> I haven't even been able to pull a red, to be honest with you. The only reds that I have are like uh, a Williams logo and yeah. a bodice, and both of those I bought off of eBay because um, they were going yeah. for the cheap at the time. I haven't even been able to hit a red. Um, 
whenever I bought my 12 boxes, they were all like individual scattered around. So I didn't have a fresh case. So I didn't yeah. get any of like, you know, the guaranteed you didn't case, get the case right. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. I've, um, so I, I didn't realize this and, and this was like my, my bad, but, uh, I opened a case and I had zero autos out of a case, fresh case. Like okay. I popped it. Yeah. And, uh, the local card store, really good, uh, card store, uh, in my hometown, they're like, you need to email tops, you know, and, and they might yeah. correct that. And what I've noticed like from Jupe and a couple other people in the Instagram community is people are getting replacement cards, like replacement autos, mm -hmm. but they're getting like replacement red Hamilton autos and stuff that are coming in. Oh my Could God. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine going like, yeah. I didn't get my autos in my boxes or here's an F2 card that's like bent or an all bomb that has yeah. no auto on it. And then you get like a red Hamilton. Oh my gosh. That'd be huge. You tell me that now, I could tell you what, I'm probably after this going to log on the tops and I have <laughs> some Claire redemptions. And I'm going to request a replacement right away for him. <laughs> you, as, as you should. I, by the way, yeah, like right. I, I've submitted the Dan Tictum, two of those redemptions, two of the Claire's. Yeah. You know, haven't gotten anything. But to your point, I think everyone is going to see what what people have gotten here from Tops and yep. be like, dude, replace these cards. For have me. you talked to them on the phone yet? Because I called I them and spoke to them with the redemption. I spoke to the redemption department. And they are still currently working on the autos, is what they said. Which yeah. I don't understand how you can still be chasing Claire down to get her to sign some stickers. Um, but apparently that's the case. Uh, but he did advise me if this first quarter of the year goes by and I still nothing is oh, you know, ask proceeded for a to yeah ask for a replacement. Um, and hopefully one of those Hamiltons will show up, like you said. Man. <laughs> yeah, that that would be that would be big. Hey, just to just to close out here. Um, you know, as we're we're looking into this new or this next 2022 season of F1, we got these new cards that are going to be coming out from Tops. Hopefully, this month they keep on getting delayed, you know, and stuff. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited about in F1, or whether it's in cards or just the season? Uh, man, to be honest, I really just want to see how these new cars perform. Um, the new cars are going to either. Like people are saying, oh, it's going to be so much closer, so much this, so much. And I think it could be closer. But at the same time, some of the money behind the scene that's not in the budget just for developments and the sure factories, I feel like we could have another huge gap again. So yeah. I just can't wait to see that first race to see the cars just even qualify and see the times that we're looking at to see what type of season, you know, we're going to have. Um, you know, the cards coming out, I'm excited for but I'm not as excited as seeing the new car. You know, I, agree. I really want to see the new cars on the track. Um, the first lights out. Um, that's going to be, you know, I'm going to be holding my son, trying not to squeeze the life out of him. You know, Keep, yeah. you know, the, the, I can't wait for the start of the season. Really, the new cars. I, I'm pretty interested in them. I like the lights out product um, because they have some rookies in there that are going to be the true rookies. You know, like the. Uh, Schumacher, Schumacher and, uh, unfortunately, Sir yeah. spins a lot, Maze Pen, and yeah, the Sonotas. Yeah. So I do like that product for that stuff. But I'm interested to see how this new Chrome product is received. Um, I really like their original product, and I wish they would have stuck with some of the design and maybe, you know, just ventured off of that a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see. And I, of course, as we know, it's going to be printed a million times more than this first product was. So, um, It'll be interesting to keep up with. Um, well, I have you on here. I want to ask you a couple of questions yeah. real quick. Do yeah. you have anything else that you collect besides F1, like any other cards? Well, or I, I grew up in the 80s where I was collecting just junk wax of baseball and okay. um, some pretty bad basketball in, in the 90s. I did gotcha. hit some of the Kobe's on the early, you know, kind of Kobe train. But, uh, you know, for okay. me, it was, yeah, I, I like you. I grew up racing dirt bikes uh, as a kid in okay, Southern gotcha. California. And so I've always been into, you know, just racing or motorsports. And um, one of my friends was like, dude, you got to watch this like Netflix series. And I was like, I'm not like, I don't know anything really about Formula One. And, yeah. and I watched it and I got hooked. I didn't get hooked for like, you know, the, the drama is like Max Verstappen talks yeah. about it's all fake and all that. I just got hooked up like yeah. the behind the scenes of like everything that goes into like the races yeah. and the driver preparation, the speed and just the honestly, just the the film work of all of it was just amazing, like to watch. And yeah, so it's it shot very well, for sure. Oh, 
and so then um and then like we were watching something else about just like how cards were starting to explode after this like you know the, the pandemic and you know people started collecting yeah. hobby you know and cards again and then i saw there was f1 cards i was like i think i want to check a few of these things out now i got in yeah end of summer so i got in a little bit okay. late all i know people gotcha. that got in right at april where the local card shop they said a guy bought six cases ripped all six cases in one day at their shop and just had oh stacks God. and stacks you know of, of cards yeah so i wish I, I wish i was that but in terms of collecting yeah you know i i collected all sports but now i'm just 100 percent f1 i've been selling off a lot of okay. my basketball and i'm all in man gotcha yeah yeah I'm, I'm mainly f1 but i do have a couple of things here i wanted to share yeah, some sure. of your um followers just yeah. to give them i know a lot of guys log on your youtube your channel yeah, and they yeah. want to kind of get some maybe uh, other pickups some of the stuff that they should check out are first edition pokemon packs let me put that put that up there yeah, um, nice where did you find right them? now um this was uh off a of facebook uh group buy Wow. Um, and there's this uh, guy posted up that he had these. He needed to clear out some of his first edition packs. Um, and I scooped them up for like 25% of what they're going on on eBay. Man, um, good for you. That's a good buy. With how the Pokemon market is, the Pokemon market right now is down like crazy. So you can like, some of these packs were selling for $1,000 last year whenever, you know, all yeah. the insane, you know, Logan Paul crap was going on. Um, and then another one that they can pick up for cheap are these um, original theme decks. And some of these theme decks can actually be shadowless as well. So you could pick mm. up these theme decks for in like the maybe $200 range. And if you get a shadowless deck, you're looking at easily doubling your money, if not more. Um, but if you hold it in five years, these things are going to be in the thousands again. Um, and the last thing that I really um, think is super undervalued that a lot of people don't really collect too much yet are dragon ball z cards oh um, yeah there is a very smaller i'd say about 20 percent of the pokemon community um that collects dbz but this is a vermilion bloodline uh booster box you can pick these up for about 200 250 uh right now and if my calculations are correct probably within about five years these are going to be 2000 plus wow um there's the original tournament of power box um, it's like a $7,000 booster box right now. So they're tracking the same way kind of Pokemon was, but these came out much later in Pokemon. So you still have that chance to get in and buy the sealed product now and hold it for 10 years and get the, you know, $30,000 booster box sales. So, you know, so when down was the, the line, D so. DBZ released? Like what, what year? Oh God. Uh, I want to say like mid 2000s to late yeah. 2000s. Okay. Um, this Vermilion okay. Bloodline box, I believe, let me just check the copyright on it to give you the exact date, if I could find it here real quick for yeah, you. All good. Uh, yeah, that, that's smart yeah. for other buys. Yeah. I was at a local card show and uh, I had all F1 and there's, you know, hockey, some hockey, some soccer, but mostly yeah. baseball, basketball and football. And there was Pokemon and my kids were all over it. They're buying ETBs, you know, and stuff and, yep. you know, going through the packs and they're like, dad, I, I pulled out $250 yeah. worth of value. And it's like, well, hold on to it yeah. for a while and then see where it goes. Yep. Yeah. So that's something that some of your followers, if they're watching this video and they want to think like, um, you know, the F1 stuff, super expensive right now. Is there any yep. sealed product that I could buy and hold on to and still make thousands down the line possibly? I mean, it is a gamble for sure. It could not go up in value, but where the prices of some of this stuff I just showed you are, you're never going to lose on them. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one of those things that you buy it, put it in one of those acrylic cases that I had had them yep, in, good hold. throw it on your shelf, and just let it set for ten years, yep. and give it to your kids to sell for you know college, or you sell it yourself and, and reinvest it. But uh, that's just something I wanted to throw at the end for some of the uh, people yeah, who also no, do some other cool. as well. Yeah, and, and it reminds me of. Tips. Um, like I, you asked if I collect anything else. I, I actually do have comics, um, but a lot of that stuff, okay. they're just, they're cased. They sit on a shelf. They look yeah. like art, you know, and they just yep. like increase in value. And as I've had them on the shelf yeah, for exactly. close to 10 years, you know, whether it's a yes. Justice League number one or, you know, any mm -hmm. of these like big comics I have, it's like, they look good sitting on the shelf and they just yeah. increase in value. So, you know, it's not yeah, bad. Why case. not, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, that's, that's, really that's a, like it all the time. People always ask me like, oh, well, I can't afford it. You know, a, a F1 case. Is there anything else I could buy and hold on to? 
And besides them buying individual packs on eBay for, you know, $100 a pack, um, I'm like, well, are you into other stuff? Because there are other avenues out there, um, but not of the F1 stuff right now. I'm yep. not sure. Have you heard about the MetaZoo phase? No. Mm -mm. No. So if, if after you hop off this, you have to look into it. Um, I'm yeah, not I'll a MetaZoo in. collector. First, let me say that. But um, that's something else I know people are buying up a lot and trying to hold on to resale. But unfortunately, in my um, experience, I believe it to be a pump and dump for sure. Um, the creator of the product straight up said whenever he released it, like this card, which is the Mothman, you know, he's, this is the Chars, the first edition Charizard. You should be grading this now. And and anyone that is in the TCGs knows that's like a red flag, you know, right off the get go. Um, and then you got to look at the player base and like the live Twitch stream tournaments. It, ju it, it just seems like a pump and up to me. You don't have the same. player background. Yeah, exactly. So that's a warning, too. If any of you people are watching this, there's yeah, going to be, be people careful. hating on me. I'm, I'm sure that they're like, no, MetaZoo's a shit, man. But a lot of that are people our age that are buying the MetaZoo just to resell and to make money on, not to play the TCG, yeah. which is what drives a lot of these cards are, you know, it drives TCG. like the fandom and the excitement and stuff. And yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Hey, um, yeah. to, to close this out, you're going to be doing some some breaks on F1 Lights Out. And so just want to make yep. sure people, you know, know, you know, it, you might not have any available when this video comes out, but, you know, follow yeah. Saucy World on Instagram and, you know, one, yep. you're selling cards, you're doing some breaks. You're also just posting some like cool stuff in your personal collection with some good insights. So yeah, for sure. a big follow for anybody out there just to follow Saucy World. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, everyone stop in, check out the channel. I do YouTube as well. Um, a lot of the people that you see, the cards you see on my page, you'll see people comment underneath them. You can go check out their profiles. A lot of those cards are on their profiles now because I sold to them. Um, awesome. And the always, I love my customers because they always post my feedback. Um, you know, I'm a true like um, feng shui vibe type of guy. So I give people the best deal um, without me going broke, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I ship my stuff like as fast as I can. I get to their door and everyone awesome. that's bought in from me, I love my stuff. So, um, definitely, um, check out my page and I will work whatever deal I can for the people to make them happy because I know that they're going to end up with a card that I want one day yeah. and, uh, hopefully they'll return the favor, you know? Yeah. It all, it all comes back around. Well, Hey man, really for appreciate sure. your time. Thanks so much for joining and, yep. uh, for everybody follow just saucy world on Instagram and check out the YouTube videos. Appreciate you as well, man. Have a good one.